they may call it dialogue, but it's really not dialogue because nobody's listening to anyone else, and more importantly, nobody's hearing anyone else, and at the final level, really nobody's communicating with anyone else. Maybe the most effective thing they could do for these kinds of so-called dialogues is to set up some ground rules where nobody can initiate until he's responded to the last person's suggestion. Our position at this point, Don, is that we don't want to get tied up in making a ruling on a technicality on Robert's rules one way or the other. We want the people on the Dallas Community Action Board to get together to have board meetings and to work for the function of providing resources for the poor. That's our position at this point. Well, it's my senior year, and uh, I played here now for several years, and all leading up to your senior year, so you hope it is. Speaking for the defense, how do you think you'll do this year? Well, we've got most of our people back. Our secondary is intact, and, and all of our linebackers are back except for one, and most of our people down front have played considerably, so uh, we feel like as a defense we should have a good year. You'll start off with a big test against Oklahoma. Yes, sir, we will, and of course they've got uh, 38 of 44 of their top players coming back, and uh, they're going to have a fine team, and uh, we're expecting a real good ball game and a real hard test. What did you
we're mindful of the fact that black people did all of the building until the organization of the American Federation of Labor, and that they laid down the number one qualification, that you must be white. That's a qualification black people cannot meet today any more so than they met when it was first organized. The representatives of the American Federation of Labor who have participated in these negotiations for the past year are the only ones who are not amenable to an agreement an agreement whereby the black people and the Mexican people can be included in the construction industry of this city. Not everyone who spoke felt that hostily about it, but everyone here expressed their displeasure that after having met for more than a year and repeatedly tried to come up with a plan everyone could agree to, no one from the labor, from the labor unions was here tonight when the contract was signed. A spokesman for the Labor Department is here. I asked him whether labor unions were always the problem. He said no, at earlier stages in the game, usually minority groups did not believe in the sincerity of efforts such as this. But that labor unions, he said, are usually, ultimately, the stumbling block. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. There's a showdown brewing between labor unions in Fort Worth and the United States Labor Department. And from here, it appears the feds have all the marbles. The Labor Department has issued memos to 70 major American cities telling them to get their labor unions, construction companies, and minority groups together to provide job training and jobs for minority people in the construction industry. A figure of 23% has been adopted as fairly representing the number of minority people in Fort Worth. So, in order to meet the Labor Department requirements, the goal of the effort here must be, ultimately, to have 23% of the people working in construction either black or brown. For over a year, union people, construction company people, and minority people have been meeting almost every Wednesday night trying to arrive at a plan acceptable to all three groups. So far, they have been unsuccessful. I said the labor unions would be involved in a showdown with the Labor Department. On two occasions during the past year, the minority and construction people have agreed on a proposed agreement. Labor has not been able to agree with either plan. The Labor Department has granted two time extensions to the coalition, saying they'd rather have a plan local people had developed and could live with. The alternative is for the Labor Department to impose a plan on Fort Worth. Now time is running out. The coalition meets tonight with a completed plan. The minorities will sign it. The construction people will sign it. But so far, only one of the 21 labor groups involved has indicated it would sign. At least seven or eight labor signatures would be needed for the plan to be acceptable to the Labor Department. However, if the pact is not signed tonight by a significant representation of each group, each group, it is unclear exactly what will happen, because the Labor Department has several similar situations around the country, and they say that legally and logistically, there's just not much they could do immediately if no pact is signed. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News, reporting.
that's very true. We have. We've discussed every idea, every angle that anyone can come up with in about the last two weeks around this office. We have discussed denial to refund. We've discussed termination of the agency. Uh, we've discussed the other ways the board may be formed. We've discussed the fact that under the Green Amendment to the EOA Act, the city and council have the right to opt out of the program and designate a different group as a community action agency in Dallas. These are just things that we've discussed. We've reached no conclusion. And there is no imminent danger of uh, cutting off of funds? No, sir. Not at this point. I always place the responsibility at the top. Uh, the person who is paid to discharge uh, the responsibilities is always ultimately responsible. And I think you have to place this right at the top with the governor who ordered out the National Guard. Prisoners who were with their backs to the wall, so to speak, you know, had to be in a negotiable position. They had, they had to negotiate. They really didn't have any options. There were attempts by prison officials and state officials to negotiate. Are you of the opinion that, that the officials themselves were not capable men as far as negotiating was concerned? I believe that uh, mature men of uh, goodwill and with skills in their areas could have negotiated effectively with these inmates. There are available to us today many different models for a human resource development program. Some of these have already been implemented in a number of prisons. For example, the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary has been transformed from essentially an, uh, an anarchy where the inmates were in charge of the prison to what is now considered to be the national model for adult corrections. And this was done simply by training 12 line officers to get involved in and discharge responsibilities in, in, in correctional counseling, to work with the men, to work to affect their adjustment, to develop programs, to meet some basic human needs and conditions. Could your statements be described as a coddling of the prisoners? I don't think so. I would rather suggest that uh, uh, if we're going to set standards for inmates, we ought to set standards for our professional staff that uh, we're paying to uh, conduct these institutions. No, I can't. You don't have any opinion? No, case? not at all. Not other than what she's already said. What is that? <laughs> she said her opinion was made up. She you said she it. might change it, but I don't know what her opinion is. You don't think whether it's in your favor or not? No, I couldn't pass on that. Whether the judge's decision is already made or not, it will not be delivered until tomorrow. That decision, when it comes, will be in this civil trial and will amount to an order by the court that whatever defendants lose this case not break the law anymore. However, beyond that, the judge will issue findings of fact regarding each defendant, and any findings of fact that would be applicable could then be used to secure possible criminal charges from grand juries in the future. This is Austin McDonald, Channel 8 News on the Move at the Dallas Federal Building.